Hi, this is Dr. Brendan Cronin from the Queensland Eye Institute, giving some tips for surgeons who are looking at starting the Avedro Boost collagen cross-linking procedure. It's the Avedro KXL2 machine, fabulous machine. And we all know why we use the Avedro machines. They have a great top hat profile without the hotspots that other machines can have. This little machine isn't mandatory for Boost cross-linking, but I really do like it as a check. It's an oxygen sensor, and it allows us to ensure that the concentration of oxygen in the goggles for the boost procedure is uh, above 95%, which is the optimal level. As I say, it's not mandatory, but having the oxygen sensor really has helped us as we've learned about the procedure to iron out the technique and ensure the procedure is as safe as possible for patients. Our ordered results from the procedure really have been fabulous. This is a typical flattening, not particularly severe keratoconus. But almost all of the patients are flattening around two diopters with a very clear demarcation line around 320 microns. It seems to be just as good as epithelium off a Dresden style uh, collagen cross linking. Here's the typical setup we have for the procedure. This is obviously only used for the epithelium on technique. We don't use it if we're using a, a PTK. Um, there's the little oxygen humidifier that you can see there, a bubble humidifier. And this is important so that the oxygen that's going around the patient's eye is humidified and not too drying on the cornea. It's a really important tip you need to pick up here. And you'll see that our oxygen tubing is draped over the Avedro machine and also that the oxygen humidifier, the bubble humidifier is sitting on our trolley there, very visible to the person doing the procedure. The oxygen flow on the machine needs to be around one and a half to two liters per minute. If it's turned above that occasionally, the filter on the humidifier can pop off. You'll hear a little pop if this does happen, but it's really important that you can see that it's there to ensure that it's all intact. It's also important to stretch out that tubing so that there's no kinks in it. It's very fine, fragile tubing, and any kink in the system will stop the flow of oxygen and reduce the oxygen saturation, or the oxygen percentage in the boost goggles therefore reducing the efficacy of the boost procedure. At the start of the procedure, you need to wipe the patient's cornea three times horizontally and three times vertically with a BSS soaked spear. This isn't the perfect video of me doing this. Actually, I took this from another procedure, but uh, it does at least demonstrate a wiping of the cornea just to reinforce it. This is really to remove the mu mucin layer from the surface of the cornea and it allows a better penetration of the riboflavin. And here's a video of somebody testing the oxygen percentage in the goggles uh, on me while I'm pretending to have the procedure. It really is important to get this above 95%. It's easy to do. I've never had an issue with it. But if it isn't going above 95% very quickly, ensure there's no kinking in your oxygen tubing or else turn up the flow on the oxygen system. We normally find we get 95% with one and a half to two liters per minute very, very easily. It's so important to manage a patient's pain appropriately post-operatively. It's important to put an NSAID onto their eye before the procedure begins underneath the contact lens at the end of the procedure. And we soak our contact lens in Accuvale, a preservative-free formulation of Ketolorac, uh, which enormously reduces the patient's pain. It works very well in PRK procedures. We should all be applying it to cross-linking as well to make it as comfortable as it possibly can be.